So, hello friends, today we're going to fix a colossus of a lens. So, let me just put the zoom a bit further, and then, yeah, this is the lens we're going to fix today. It is a Nikkor, uh, Apo Nikkor, uh, 610 millimeters f, f9, and then it is a lens which was made originally for uh, photo engraving, and then it is today used for really large format camera the image circle of this lens is about one meter uh, which is actually huge and then just to give you an idea of this lens size is here you have a 50 millimeters 1.8 which is made for a uh, 35 millimeter camera so now i think you have an idea okay so i got this lens very cheap uh, $35 because um, yeah the ring here which moves the aperture is just completely blocked I was able to move it but uh, with a lot of trouble and then if you see here as I move the lens there is a lot of stains and then those stains are actually fungus into the lens and um, this lens I would say catches fungus easily because uh, on his design uh, you have an opening here which is made just to put filters or other kind of stuff and then yeah obviously it you leave as I think it was uh, this lens uh, for a few years on a basement uh, yeah this is what you get okay so um, I got it very cheap so now we're going to restore it and then to do so we're going to disassemble and, and clean the lenses and then we'll try to figure it out how to uh, make that ring uh, able to move again easily okay so first thing I'm trying to remove the cap this you can simply pull it uh, yeah that's it then um, in this sense you have um, yeah, you have points here to move it but then you need like a huge spanner uh, and then actually what it did is uh, okay this lens is not difficult to fix you only need the really 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 big tools so this is my biggest rubber uh, Cube now, and then we did, I'm able to remove uh, the front cup here. Okay, good. So I have the first part just to make fun this is 50 millimeter okay so I have the string away then uh, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to flip it and then I'm going to remove uh, the same part on the other side So these parts I was able to remove initially with uh, this rubber con uh, just to gain uh, some stiffness on it. I add the uh, additional ones so I was able to get a better grip. But then for the sequence of this assembly of this lens and um, this is where things get a bit more complicated because usually lens spanner are made for uh, yeah, 35 millimeter lenses yeah. let me get one for the example this is the one I have then and this is my spanner and then you see it is 
it appears ridiculous uh, when put next to the lens. And then, yeah, the amount of force you're able to generate with this is not very big. So, what I had to do to open this lens, and then probably what you will have to do to uh, open this lens is to take out the big weapons so I just make these covers here to protect the glass okay so what I did was to Improvise a big spanner. So I have these elements here. I took the measurements. So the measurement uh, between the two points for the spanner is 94.8 millimeters. Um, and then uh, my bar here is rather long. So I'm able to put enough torque. Uh, into the lens and then um, I, I told you I got everything loose and then uh, on button I put the lens on a vise with a piece of wood to not to damage the lens and then I apply the torque I actually had to put some uh, and then at some point the lens eventually came exactly like in the video but yeah, uh, standard. Um, yeah, oh shit, I got stuck. What? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this was uh, for the spanner. I had to make my own spanner, and then once. You get this loose. Yeah, you're able to remove this element here, which is quite big, and then it takes a lot of threading. Okay, so here is first element here, and then uh, we access straight away, and then we see the fungus in the lens. Okay, so uh, then uh, we go to the other side, same exercise with the big spanner, so we put it, the distance between uh, the points for the spanner is the same uh, between the front and the back, and then uh, yeah, this lens is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter uh, in which direction you use, you will get the same performance because the lenses are perfectly symmetrical and this lens is also very well suited for uh, um, ultraviolet applications because as I read yesterday uh, at the time uh, the resins uh, that were used to do photo engraving were more sensitive to um, ultraviolet light as are some glues today so um, these lenses were made especially uh, with glass that, that, that is able to accept um, uh, how do you say that uh, ultraviolet light and then the construction is very simple I'll say just after I remove Then we have the second element, really, 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 really big lens. And then we have the body here. This is the part we want to um, understand how it's going. Um, 
for uh, reassembly. So here, this element here, and you have a retaining ring. Now it is loose. Then again, uh, remove this lens, and uh, it was a pain because there is some glue somewhere uh, retaining the ring. And then uh, the way I did uh, to remove it, um, I didn't knew about the glue actually. So I did it by pure force. Was to use uh, my actual spanner key uh, with these flat heads that I have here. was to use this rod I made. Okay. I need to make it even bigger spanner so I have to go to the limit of the spanner here to get in position and then what I did was to take this element here Take this rod and then to force and then all that obviously under a vice. Otherwise, I think I wouldn't be able to uh, realize. Um, it touches this ring at some point. I just heard that click, and then uh, the lens, the ring, the retaining ring came out and. Uh, easily so here this is a bit annoying because there is so much unscrewing to do on this lens easy task and then you have this uh, retaining uh, ring uh, here uh, and then for that I got uh, this hook here and then I just need to pull here yeah. need to pull and then put something behind and then one once uh, it is out, it comes out quite easy actually. This is the advantage of uh, working with big parts. Then here, um, you have a pin here that, uh, that actually goes outside here. And then uh, once you have that pin, uh, just let me get driver so you get this pin here and then uh, you're able to remove uh, this element here which is the the guiding for the aperture blades and then here we have the aperture blades and then oh bad idea okay and anyway, i need to remove them uh, and then i am able to see there is a slot here behind uh, and then uh, i can see that uh, okay this thing is able to move 
but then I am not able to remove it yet I don't know why uh, I tried yesterday but then uh, what I see here is that the uh, this ring outside here seems to be screwed so what I can do uh, after cleaning the optical elements is just try to put some uh, some lighter fluid to see if uh, it gets a bit loose and then the grease uh, probably the grease which is behind is going to dissolve so uh, I'm going to get uh, the cleaning stuff to clean the lenses before which is for me the most important thing and then uh, we'll take a look at this uh, this ring which is blocked too so I will come back in, come back in a few seconds so hello friends uh, at the end I managed to uh, remove the aperture ring which I have here and then uh, to do so uh, what I did is uh, as I told you before and as I suspected it was a threading and then uh, here you have confirmation of that I added some uh, lighter fluid uh, on the rim here just and then it become it became uh, yeah soft enough uh, so I could uh, unscrew it it and then uh, here this is the shape you have and then you have the threading and you have the opening and we just saw before um, and then it's to connect this pin here uh, to the rest of the mechanism and then uh, I was able uh, to remove uh, here uh, 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 there's something I don't get here but anyway I will check it just after I was able to remove uh, also the full aperture mechanism here that you have um, I didn't disassemble because it's mounted and then uh, I did it uh, I was able to do it because I removed this screw here on the back which was hidden by uh, the aperture ring okay so uh, we have uh, this uh, left to remove uh, um, I don't know if it is worth the effort um, since we can clean pretty much everything uh, starting from here and then this element moves quite a lot so the only thing that is left is here and then um, let's do the first thing I would like to do and I mean, wanted to do it since uh, four days ago that I got the lens is to remove all these nasty fungus so let's just take a, a quick look at that just let me get the camera closer and then here I get the usual gear uh, my optical cleaning fluid I have my isopropyl alcohol that I use for first cleans and then uh, my optical cleaning paper then also the body here is also dirty we're going to clean that as well uh, do I have a good focusing ok yes I do Okay, so first thing we put a generous amount of isopropyl alcohol and then let's hope that the fungus has an edge into the glass otherwise we'll be a pity for the lens but anyway okay I will take a cloth this microfiber thing okay I think that sadly the fungus let's mark the glass let's try with something else I have this fluid honestly I don't know what is in, but uh, 
it is very good against fungus. I spread it in my finger. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So Yes, fungus has an edge the glass. This is a very good news. And then we don't have uh, fungus on the interior of the lens. Wow. Oh, my lens is looking really, 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 really good now. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the optical clinic part. So the thing I was most afraid was that the fungus has etched into the glass. But then uh, it is not the case. This is really, really good. Um, and then honestly, I have... Uh, out of um, well, I've been repairing lenses for four years now, and then uh, out of I don't know some hundred hundred lenses, I have only seen one that uh, has gotten the lens etch by fung by fungus, uh, and then it was a Sigma 90 millimeters. Yeah, that's the only time I have seen that. Uh, otherwise, uh, most of the time, um, fungus uh, doesn't uh, destroy the glass, and then, uh, yeah, this lens has uh, probably 60 years, and then it has had fungus for I don't know how many, and then we see that we can remove it. Okay, this is for the clean. I will do the cleaning of the other lens of the camera. And then uh, we're going to proceed to the cleaning of the mechanical part. And then I will just show you how do I start with that. And then obviously I will do the rest of the camera because this is quite a lengthy process. Okay, so I got my lighter fluid and then I will start removing the old grease out of this ring. So it moves smoothly in the future and then uh, I'm not trying to keep the lens so the future owner of this lens would be really 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 happy with it okay so the cleaning is going to take a while so uh, let's meet in a few seconds just for the reassembly of the lens So hello back friends, I clean everything, now everything is ready to reassemble, so uh, we're going to do that now, and then uh, there is something I realize here, is that this is the aperture mechanism, and then uh, we'll remove this ring here from it, but then uh, we actually, we don't need to, just let me make sure, I'll focus in. So here, this we can keep it as is, and uh, now that we understood uh, well how the lens is uh, assembled, so this is the first thing, N then uh, we need to put it here, and then uh, what we want to do is to match this white point, which is actually a drill, uh, to uh, the whole uh, 
which is here. So I put this element here. Okay. And then okay. Now we're close to it. Then we put this screw here. This is done. I don't know how far I have to go with it. Well, now it is black. So before it was a bit loose. I don't know if it was intentional. So let's leave it like that as before. Um, then uh, once we have that, we should put the ring here and then uh, okay I want I also want to make sure that I am in the right position oh. okay it's less easy to move The ring. Okay, now we're going to put so this I already did. I already put some of this grease here on the threaded. If you remember, uh, we removed the old grease and then we put new one. So it's this one, it's a SKF. And uh, grease, and then uh, the reference is LGLT2, and then this uh, zero well, it's written, but cannot see it. Zero point zero twenty five is the, the size of the of this uh, package. Okay, now. It's not super easy, but it's a lot better than before. And then the thing in here is I should be able to see the pin. So this I think I'll have to test. Where is the hole? Okay, the pin. The pin is just a bit high. So I finally managed to align uh, the hole on the pin. Uh, what is the? Yeah, this is the pin here. Uh, I just need to do some rotations uh, until I was at the right level here at the slot. That took me some time. This is why I cut the video. Um, but then and uh, now it's working. As I told you before, um, yeah, it's not super smooth. So I think. The, one of the rings is a bit deformed and then yeah this is very uh, yeah this is a very good possibility since here it is deformed uh, like uh, having an impact so uh, but I'm not going to linger into that since anyway I am able to change the aperture I thought with some F4 I can change it 
and it is uh, yeah and that's even better that no motion at all okay so we're really close for finishing the assembly of the lens so what we do next is we put this ring we took before which is which has the job of blocking this element here so yeah I think now that I think and uh, we did good in not using the screw uh, to push it entirely so then uh, what is my pin here then here I have the pin now and then uh, we're on the back of the lens so we're going to put the back lens which is very clean now there is some traces of uh, clean on the exterior but I got it uh, this way and then for the price I paid I cannot complain because $35 is rather cheap okay I just tighten by hand a bit then here on the front Oh, I'm so happy of getting rid of this fungus. Now the lens looks and feels a lot better. Okay, so just need to make sure I will finish with the spanner wrench just after. Just let me put this element here. I don't think I'm going to tighten everything like crazy. Okay, this makes a really nasty noise. Sorry for that. Okay, up. This is the front, then we put back plate here, come on, oh, come on little guy, what's going on, ok, that's it, that's it. Everything has run smoothly into the gear. What's the matter with you? Ah! Okay, now it's okay. Right, no. yes. It is. I don't know what happened there. That's all guys. We have uh, fixed this lens. It is an Aponicor uh, 610mm f9 for large large format cameras and then it looks super nice now. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Uh.